there were a number of brooches uh, in the jewelry bag. Um, this lovely porcelain brooch, unfortunately it's broken, but uh, I've ra rarely seen one that's got all of its points. Um, this leaf, this leaf, this leaf are broken, little chips out of um, a couple of the flowers. Um, this brooch was made in England. I'm not sure if this is a silver back, but it says uh, Bridgewood Cara China Mayflower, made in Eng or handmade in England. Um, so I'm going to hang on to that. It's pretty. It might be worth um, you know putting a little bit of paint on and on the ends of the leaves and putting it on a box top uh, as a decoration. It would also be nice in a uh, brooch bouquet because it would be the edges would be hidden in among the other brooches. There was this little star um, pin, and it's an excellent shape, except it's missing one little rhinestone in this little black spot over here. So there's a little repair job for me. <clears throat> there was this gold tone brooch, vintage gold tone brooch, uh, textured. Um, gold with these beautiful Aurora Borealis rhinestones and uh, riveted on the back and just needs a little cleaning. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, there was this uh, huge uh, brooch. Um, I think it's meant to go this way. I'm not entirely sure. There, it's huge. Um, it has all the rhinestones. Um, the only problem is it's missing part of the clasp, so it's missing the little disc that swings around and, and um, holds the, the bar of the clasp in place. So that's a, a, a fix-it project for down the road. <coughs> Excuse me, there was this lovely little um, handmade rocking horse. I think it's made out of polymer clay, I'm not entirely sure. Um, and it's signed... Uh, Rook, R-O-O-K-E, on the back. But a lovely attention to detail with the uh, reins and the eye. The mane is textured. The saddle has got uh, stitching outline. So a lovely little handmade uh, rocking horse. And then there were two uh, brooches that I saw them uh, in the bag. So from the back, they looked um, identical. Um, and when you turn them over, you can see that they're very different. Uh, one is the uh, black plastic center with uh, rhinestones surrounding it. Uh, there are three rhinestones missing in the in center circle. I've already replaced two rhinestones on the outer circle because they had the right size. Um, and uh, the other ones are on order to be replaced. And then in this one with the, the clear rhinestones in blue, um, I'm missing three blue rhinestones on the outer circle, so I've ordered some that I'm hoping will match. These are um, uh, Aurora Borealis finish, so uh, they're a little more difficult to match correctly. We'll see what happens. There were quite a few uh, pendants uh, in the jewelry bag. This is a large glass pendant. Um, I'm not sure if you can tell, but there's some scratches on it, and I thought it, it was surprising to have scratches on the finish, but as you uh, run your finger over it, it, it turns out that the um, paint or the finish, the shiny finish on the glass is flaking off. So the uh, only thing to do with this uh, in the future would be to uh, either clean off all the paint and repaint it or uh, repurpose it in some way. And there just happened to be another piece that was probably a pendant. It's a piece of shell. There's a couple of holes here for a ring to, or some kind of attachment to put it on a necklace. And then it's got a shiny blue surface, so that coordinates quite nicely with this other one. Um, so, But uh, that's a pendant that can be repurposed. There was another shell pendant. Um, and you can either have it this way, there's a silver tone leaf and a faux pearl and the, the shiny mother of pearl. Or you can have the pieces on this side um, with the uh, mother of pearl and brown shell. So a sort of dual purpose pendant. 
This actually was uh, a single earring and I've taken the hook off it so that it can be used as a pendant. There were it had to be 30 odd uh, single earrings so that one's going to be repurposed as a pendant. Um, this uh, as well was a single earring that's going to be repurposed as a pendant. Um, this was just by itself. It probably was a pendant. It's a, a faux pearl with a cap on it to kind of look like a little acorn. It just needs a jump ring so that it can go on a chain. There was this uh, fake Tiffany and Company lock. It actually works. I'm always amazed at how um, real, <laughs> I guess is the right word, they make the fake Tiffany stuff. Um, so this is, uh, I don't have any way of testing it to see if it's silver. Um, I can't remember if I tested to see if it was magnetic. Um, anyway, I'm pretty sure that it's fake Tiffany. It would, I don't think it would be in a jewelry bag if it was real Tiffany. There was uh, an immaculate uh, conception of Mary um, religious medal. There was, this was from another earring. Uh, single earring. I've taken the earring hook off because it can be made into a pendant. There was this little um, pearl pendant. With, and on the bail, it has interesting letters NVC. So if anybody knows what NVC stands for with a pearl, let me know. <clears throat> there were a number of heart pendants. This one was on a cord, just a black cord that was twist tied around here. It says believe in English on the front and in French, qua on the back, a lovely pewter style heart. There was this heart that was loose in uh, the bag. And this heart is actually right here. It's signed 925. Whoops. There. You can see that 925. So there was some silver in the bag. There was this pair of hearts as well. It could be a pen made into a pendant. This heart with some uh, tiny rhinestones in the side. This heart charm. And it has a marking on the inside of the of the bale up here that looks like not whoops sorry too high right inside there where my fingernail is pointing looks like it says 925 and then these were two charms were with the eye uh, charm on uh, an Alex and Annie type bracelet that was rusted and had really sharp flaking metal uh, so I took them off so there's a B it kind of looks like the Brighton B but I don't think it is a and then a heart. So lots of little heart charms. Um, and a couple more pieces that I took off of earrings. Uh, this was a single earring, so I've taken the hook off so we can uh, repurpose that into a pendant. And this textured flower earring. Probably needs a stone in the center to brighten it up. This was a pendant, and I'm not sure what it came off of originally. It's just plastic. Um, but it's in good condition. And this too was a single earring that I'm going to repurpose as a pendant. I just, all I did was take the, uh, the black hook off. So those are the, um, the pendants. Now let's go on to earrings. And I got some really interesting stuff to show you there. I thought I'd show you this pile of uh, broken... Uh, or single earrings that was in the uh, jewelry bag and now I've gone and, oh here it is this special one there was only one um, it was a bit of a disappointment because only one because right inside here it's marked 925 uh, I have no idea if that's a real pearl I don't have any idea if this is really silver I did it wasn't magnetic um, but I'm going to set it aside so that if there's ever a chance to test it, I can. Um, some wild and wonderful pieces. I think I'll try to repurpose th this uh, clip back earring. 
There's the clip back. It's got a cool uh, pattern on the front. And this are, these are two pieces that are, I don't know, glued or riveted together. Um, but I think it would make a nice embellishment um, in a piece of jewelry. There were these monsters. This is one. Whoops, this is the way it goes. <laughs> There's a pair of these, if you would believe. There's the other one. These are uh, clipback earrings. One's missing his clipback. That's not such a disaster. Um, I have no idea when you would ever wear these. Uh, des definitely costume earrings, I think. Um, I'm most interested in these copper backs. I think the sequins could be taken off and uh, they could be repurposed. So um, hang on to those. There were these. Uh, wooden earrings, wooden hoop earrings bound with wire. Unfortunately, this hoop is cracked, so they'll never be a pair. Um, there's this quite bright pair of uh, green earrings with the green dangles. Unfortunately, this one's missing the post, um, but I again think that these could be repurposed. Um, or taken apart and uh, the various parts reused. Um, let's see, there's these two earrings. I saw these from in the bag when I was trying to decide to purchase it, if I was going to purchase it. These are broken um, clip back earrings, uh, kind of heavy but would might might make nice pendants or a part of a bracelet. There's some hoop earrings that don't have any matches. Um, some little post earrings without matches. The pearls don't match. This might be a real pearl. I don't know. A um, couple more hoops. This uh, green cabochon is probably worth hanging on to and using it to repair a piece of jewelry. This was an earring. There's only one of them. It's totally plastic, so it's nice lightweight. It uh, could be used uh, for repurposing. This is a nice post earring with um, Aurora Borealis and a nice glass stone in the center. No mate, so parts for repurposing. This is some kind of a leaf. It's got a hook on either side, so I don't know if it what it was really used for. There's wire attached to it. Um, not an earring, but uh, an extra piece that was in there. Um, this was an interesting earring that could be taken apart, um, made into a pendant, uh, used in uh, some kind of design, a little uh, flower, um, another hoop, a couple of hoops. This is, uh, again, parts of an earring. Could be used possibly as a pendant. I don't know what this was originally. It's quite heavy, um, and it's losing its plating, but it says Dior on the bottom. I doubt it's real. Um, this was a lovely earring, a, a, a lovely adjustable spring back earring, very good quality. Uh, no maker's mark. I would expect that this is jade. Um, because to have both the clip and the adjustable clip uh, is something you would see in Monet and Trafari earrings. Even though this isn't marked, I expect that's a piece of jade. Um, yeah, just a, a disc that could be repurposed, a rhinestone to be repurposed. Um, there should be another one of these hanging around somewhere. It's a plastic disc with a, a, a fabric back, and the you can see that the the stitching is starting to come undone uh, on these earrings, so these parts can be uh, repurposed. Then we'll move on to the pairs of earrings. Let me just move those out of the way. There was this interesting pair of earrings. Um, I had some high hopes, just some, for them. They're, they're very gray looking, uh, as in tarnished, but it turns out they're magnetic. Um, so they're not silver, and uh, the centerpieces look like they're chips of turquoise, but they could just be chips of some dyed stone. They're very dirty, need a good cleaning. 
when I found these, I first I found the first one and I thought, oh, it's a belt buckle. It's huge. This is actually a clip-on earring. Um, it's, you know, as long as my thumb. And there's a pair of them! So if anybody out there would like these earrings, please let me know. They are huge. And here are some more uh, of the pairs of earrings. Uh, this is a lovely, uh, I would say, modern pair of earrings. Uh, somewhat chandelier style with uh, filigree half moons. Whoops, there, there's the front. And uh, these lovely dangly balls. These are not um, silver, but they're very wearable and in excellent shape. Um, the back is not as uh, textured as the front, but uh, that wouldn't mind when you're wear wouldn't matter when you're wearing them. <clears throat> There's this interesting pair of clip-on earrings, just a little tiny clip in the back. Um, quite discreet, quite wearable. Um, nice modern pattern. I have a pair almost identical to this that are Sarah Coventry earrings, so I don't know what age. These would be, they're, they're very lightweight, but in excellent condition. A small pair of uh, faux pearl earrings uh, with the uh, earring, with the butterfly clutches on the back. Uh, this is a large dangling pair of earrings. Uh, one of the wire hooks is, uh, one of the ear hooks is missing, but that's easily replaced. Uh, or these could be repurposed um, as pendants or other embellishments in a necklace. There's this pair of wooden earrings that are not broken. Just plain wood, a little bit of scuffing, just needs some cleaning up, I think. And then there were these earrings that I was flabbergasted with when I found them. These are Zuni style earrings. I was hoping they were really real Zuni. <laughs> but they, uh, even though they're missing the posts, they are marked 925 here on the back. And you can see I've been using the eraser just to see how they shine up. And they are going to shine up very nicely. I did use the eraser on the front of this so you can see how the surface um, shines up and all the way around the center oval. This one I haven't done any shining at all. Um, I'm not sure what the center pieces are. Um, you can just hear when you tap them that these are hollow earrings. Um, this design is found in many um, copies of Zuni style or Southwestern earrings. I mean, this this almost identical pattern I found online uh, in earrings uh, ranging from $30 US up to $100 US. Um, this looks to be plastic or some kind of resin in there. I'm not sure if the metal parts that are the separators are silver or not. Uh, most of the ones that I saw that were reproductions um, did not have those silver spacers in there. So maybe these are just older reproductions. Um, and one of the things I found in doing my research is that <clears throat> you'll see some of this type of stuff marked uh, Zuni or Zuni made. Um, and they are being made in Zuni Philippines, which is... Um, misleading. Um, however, they're very nice earrings and I'm hoping that I will be able to get the uh, posts restored in uh, either I'll learn to solder or I'll get someone to do them for me so that I can wear them um, because I love the design there and I think they're beautiful earrings. Um, and I, I'm pretty sure the, uh, the silver parts are silver. They're certainly not magnetic. Now we're almost in the home stretch. Um, in my uh, untangling, detangling of the um, 
jewelry bag. Um, there were pieces that were falling apart um, so that I sort of helped them along their way. This was one um, stretchy bracelet I didn't show earlier. It has some nice champagne colored pearls. I left them on the strand so that uh, they're easier to move around. But all of these pearls came from um, bra stretchy bracelets um, or necklaces that were coming apart. And they're just plastic pearls, so they're great for um, kids to play with in making jewelry. I'll just move them off to the side here. There was a pair of earrings made out of these beads, but one earring was longer than the other, so I took them apart. Um, there's also some odds and ends of beads in there, seed beads that were in the uh, jewelry bag. This is a bracelet that was um, in the jewelry bag. You can see they're metal beads. They're silver tone, but they're wearing down to the copper. And I think I showed you a little earlier how these can be um, shined so that this, the silver finish is taken off and you just have the copper left. So I set these aside to do that, to shine them up to the copper. Uh, there was a pair of earrings made with these um, paper beads that I took apart. Um, and there was a, a string necklace with some wooden beads and some of the, some seed beads I also took apart. Actually, these aren't even wood. These are these are plastic and they're coated to look like wood. Uh, again, just for repurposing when I do crafts with kids. There um, was a bunch of children's jewelry. I would classify that that, that way. Um, these um, pony beads on a stretchy cord were a necklace. So I've set that aside for my kids crafts. Um, I took them apart already but there were some large plastic covered ear uh, earrings, sorry, large plastic covered paper clips made into earrings and I've already uh, taken the wires off and um, put the paper clips in my office supplies so I don't didn't go get them to show you um, but it was quite interesting uh, how someone was creative and made they weighed black, white and pink pairs. They were very lightweight and the, they were, the ear wires were, um, you know, perfect uh, brand new condition, but not my idea of, of earrings. Um, this is a bunch of charms that were probably on a bracelet. The bracelet wasn't uh, in the bag. This is a well-worn friends uh, charm from Disney, so it's losing some of its finish. Um, it says Disney on the back, but my granddaughter is happy to have that, she already said. Here's another uh, Disney charm, the sort of outline of the Mickey face, or that could be Minnie with the pink rhinestones. Again, it says Disney on the back, copyright Disney. Um, this one does, this is just a, a flower charm with a pink rhinestone in the center, a dragonfly charm with a pink rhinestone. There was a passport charm in there. Uh, doesn't really go with the rest, but... Uh, I'll keep it there. And then this came off of that Alex and Ani style uh, bracelet that was all peeling and that I threw out already, um, the eye with the rhinestones. Um, so that's my kid lot of charms. And I put this ring in there. This is um, uh, just uh, some stars and a rhinestone on a ring. Quite a small size, um, so great for play for kids. There were uh, a few things that I still haven't shown you. There were all these green glass beads. Um, there, there was no sign of a bracelet or necklace, but they're very nice glass beads. I thought at first they might be marbles. And actually there was one marble in the bag, and I think my grandson's already walked off with that. Um, you never know what you can find in the bag. There was this necklace. So you can see it's all in this tiny bag. These are tiny little seed pearls that are going everywhere now that I've, uh, I've done this. Um, I'll try to show you. Here's one end of the necklace. 
It's four strands of the tiniest seed pearls I've ever seen. And um, these beautiful luster to these little, very, very fine thread that they're on. Tiny, tiny holes in them. I have both halves of the necklace. Somehow it, uh, it got broken in, in about the center. I probably could have just gotten caught on something and then the string tore if it was old. But it's worth saving all of these little beautiful pearls. Uh, think of all the work that all the um, clamshells did to produce these little tiny pearls. And somebody had to drill the holes in them. That's what I can't get over. Anyway, this is a real treasure. Um, and I'll be finding little pearls everywhere if I don't pick, keep picking them up. Um, then there was this. You never know what you're going to find in a jewelry bag. This is the feet and tail of some articulated bird. A bird of great size. I mean, <laughs> so if you are missing the tail and feet of your bird, let me know and I will send this to you. I promise. It weighs, you know, a couple ounces. Some pieces that weren't, or mostly weren't broken, but which were quite unusual and which I'm finding more in jewelry uh, jars. Here is a ring, and it's done with a beautiful rhinestone in the center. It's just a adjustable ring. It, I would say it's part of a, a dance costume. And I'm saying that because it has this matching dangle. This is uh, this could possibly be an earring. It has an earring hook on it. It's lightweight. Um, there's only one. Uh, there was only one in the bag, but I'm going to keep these two pieces together because they could be repurposed. Um, nice, you know, plastic seed pearls. Uh, these other dangles in a similar vein are not on ear hooks. Um, they have, they're all sort of similar design. Here's one with um, uh, red and green. Oops, there's its hook that fell off. Here's another one. So I don't know if he's hooked to the belt of a costume. This one's missing whatever would have dangled in the center. There's um, a blue one with the hook and the dangles. There's another one similar. I've just managed to get them all tangled up here. Apologize for the wait. So here's another similar one uh, with the blue dangle and the hook. There is a pair, a matching pair of these blue ones. These are too heavy uh, to be made into earrings. Um, so I'll have to find a way to repurpose them. Here is uh, one in black and clear. Uh, another one in... Um, pink and green, and another one in the blue. So there's, uh, I'll put the black one here because I don't think you saw it. So there's two, four, six, eight, nine of these costume pieces. And here, somehow, I got the other earring for that match of, uh, of beaded earrings in with that group of dance pieces. Then there was this unusual pair of earrings. And all the pieces are here. Um, actually, this is the top. This is, this is the part that goes up next to the ear. The clip was on here, and I managed to knock it off. Um, these uh, clips say West Germany. And so they fit right here on the back. It looks like this one's been glued on more than once. I don't know what kind of metal uh, material this black stuff is. I haven't tested it for Bakelite yet. Um, but these are some of the biggest earrings I've ever seen. They are uh, about three inches in length. They're very lightweight. When I first saw them, I thought they were like a squid swimming downward or something. They're just 
uh, mind-boggling as to the design. I think they're incredible. They're 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 a talking piece for sure. So I'm uh, going to find the best glue to uh, repair these, and they'll be the I'll have that matching pair of earrings. We're sort of down to the the final stretch of bits and pieces. Um, this was causing havoc in the jewelry bag. Those teeth should have been uh, gripping a piece of faux leather or real leather to make um, a purse dangle or some kind of keychain. I was glad to get that out. There was this bracelet, uh, well-worn sort of copper color on the inside. Um, it's got a little bit of its gold tone on the outside, so I'm not sure if I'm going to take this down to the copper. It's um, in excellent shape, you know, structurally. Um, just it's lost uh, the color it was originally coated with. Um, these are a bunch of, uh, of plastic beads that uh, went with the pearls when I took apart those uh, broken necklaces. Some more um, beads just found in the bottom of the bag. These are black glass faceted beads and a couple of porcelain beads and one, uh, or not, or clay beads and one glass bead. So I, I certainly got my uh, money's worth in terms of bits and pieces. Um, there that can be repurposed or reused. Uh, this lovely carved maple leaf was originally a brooch. I'm sure it had a, a pin across here, and this comes from Star Rothsey, R O T H E S A Y, in New Brunswick. So this is a Canadian-made piece. Just needs a clip, uh, a brooch back put on the back. Um, and this, these are the odds of the odds and ends. Um, here's a, a well-worn adjustable ring, very heavy, um, missing a couple rhinestones, so I'll hang on to that in case I need the rhinestones. Uh, there was this lovely plastic piece of something, uh, and no idea what it went with. There were a couple of these. It looks like they came off of earrings. They're uh, in excellent shape, but that's all there is. So I suppose one could just put uh, lever backs or ear wires on the top and wear them as earrings. Uh, I'd like something a little more than that. Um, I've seen these before. I've just never seen what they're really used for. There are four of them. Um, I speculated that you could hang them uh, on a post earring to make it into a really long dangly earring, but I don't know if that makes any sense. If you have any ideas of what to do with those, let me know. Um, there was this part of a, of a uh, charm that's uh, screwed into something. It's missing its other pieces. Someone's lamp chain. Uh, I have three pieces of it. If you need some lamp chain that matches this, there's a lovely design on it. Um, a broken chain from Claire's. Uh, a bit of broken chain, or two pieces of broken chain from something else, but not enough to make any one piece. And this bit of, these are um, not glass, these are plastic. Um, Beads. I'm assuming this was part of a necklace, like the one half of the necklace and the other half's missing. Um, and somewhere in all this sorting, I put aside a little 10 karat gold chain that was broken, a very fine little chain, maybe a gram or two, um, and two silver charms that I found. And I can't find that bag now. So if I find it, I'll take a picture and show it to you at the end of this video. Um, I hope you've enjoyed my exploration of three pounds of junk jewelry from Value Village. I certainly got my money's worth from the bag. Uh, lots of amazing, interesting pieces, including these West German earrings. Um, the Zuni Southwestern style earrings that need posts. 
and all kinds of things for repurposing. Um, take care, have a good rest of the day, and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.